you know, and, and I, I, you know, and, and Chloe Grace Moretz, she carries a large chunk of this movie, man. Mostly yeah, by she herself. Does. Was this made during the pandemic? Because I was when I was watching oh, this, I'm she's like so separated from everyone else for like 45 minutes. <laughs> it's mostly her. Now it's my favorite part of the movie. Because so much of what's going on, it's almost like we're not even seeing it. We're seeing it from how she's imagining things. Yeah, are yeah, happening. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts, while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get into some of these reviews that we have here. People, you know, we have a lot of a lot of feminist movies out there. A lot of people talking about girl power, and they say it's due. You know, it's past due because uh, you know, these women, they've they've had to deal with a lot of shit from men, and they just not getting their voices heard. We got one girl talking about like, you know, no disrespect to anybody out there had to deal with all these crazy ass men and everything, but ain't none of them. Had to deal with no goddamn gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> True. And they're the most sexist of all. They're the most sexist of all people. And that is what we have here. We got Chloe Grace Moretz. She's teaming up with a group of a, a platoon or whatever you want to call them of airmen. Of flight, course, crew. Flight, flight crew. Flight crew. But of course, this being World War II. You know, this is not very progressive at all. In the old days, shit. That, that, shit. <laughs> shit, that, that good old fashioned sexism, boy. You know, you got that good old fashioned racism out there. Yeah, the, those? The, the fact that they don't rape her makes them feminists. Not the I fact. know. I mean, honestly, it was just like them going. You know, I talked to this broad secretary, and all of a sudden, boom, she was on my dick. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ! What the hell's going on? Yeah, yeah, people. She says, you know. She takes her ass down the hole because you're like, let me lock this shit with these dudes. Yes. Me. She's like, lock yeah. this shit tight. I, I breathe it easier once she went down there. Yeah. She said, you know what? Maybe I should just break this glass and fall to the ground. I really yeah. take my chances with that. <laughs> gravity. <laughs> Maybe gravity won't rape me. It's less sexist. It's less sexist yeah. these guys. Yeah. Gravity ain't called me a bitch yet. <laughs> but turns out that's not the worst that she's got to deal with. Where this is supposed to be a supply drop, she's got to deal with the Japanese coming in. Uh, y'all don't want me to help these Japanese, but what about this fucking gremlin right here? Who's turning up, who's turning up the plane? You're, you're being hysterical. <laughs> and that's the thing. You can talk about it. If they won't believe her when she says that she saw the Japanese flying underneath her, are they going to believe she saw a gremlin? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, folks. It's a lot of stuff going on here. Girl power, World War II drama adventure, and a creature feature with a gremlin all up in the sky. Let's go ahead and see if it all blends together well or if it's just slop. And we'll be back with our review right after this trailer for Shadow in the Cloud. Even the gremlins kind of kind of rape you like, hey, give me that ass. <laughs> Strap in. Yes, ma'am. So look, mm. the movie says. We know this shit is crazy, all right? We 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 know what we're getting into with this. Uh we're not it's not like we're asking you to like it. It's not like we're asking you to like the movie's like I'm not asking you to like it, you know. But one thing for sure is don't don't say we didn't tell you that there wasn't a gremlin in here. You know, I'll go telling your friends, man, this shit was crazy and then uh, can you believe the Gremlin showed up, it, you know, because they have been very forthcoming that there is a gremlin in here. It's been in the, it, it, it's, it's in the trailer. It's been in, uh, in, in all the marketing. Uh, it's been in write-ups. Hmm. They start the movie with a cartoon about a gremlin. It's supposed to be sort of a take on uh, old war films, old animated war films, where the whole thing is, you know, uh, you know, it's supposed to teach, it's supposed to teach responsibility with soldiers, you know. Uh, Careless airmen, not gremlins, cause accidents. And you know, it's a, 
or is it? You know, and I, I, the cartoon at the beginning, I, to me, it shows the, the approach that the movie's having. You know, it's, it, there's, there's a, they have a spirit of fun over logic. This movie knows exactly what it's doing. If anybody goes to watch a Fast and Furious movie and comes out and can handle that shit, this shit has a gremlin. And for me, if, you, if this is something that makes you say, what the fuck? Then it's like, wow. Then I don't think, I, you know, I can only speak for myself. But I don't think people, you have to go in with the right attitude with this. You know, this the movie also is heavy on girl power. Movie's heavy on feminist issues. And it's one of those films where it needs a lot of shitty and creepy guys for the lead heroine to prove herself against. I, I think the portrayal is, is better than they are. But the thing is, they, they, could, they could appear worse because that's the focus, that, that's the focus point of this film. You know, uh, uh, these guys really are horrible. I'll give you that. Now, that mo- the majority of them, except for maybe one or two, are complete dirtbags, man. That's one thing I can say about Wonder Woman. At least in Wonder Woman, like, the, the guys would at least say hello first. Before trying to rape you. Trying sure. to rape. Even the rapists would say good evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, they wore a tie. How yeah, you doing, yeah. baby? Want me to walk you home? Yeah. They were very upfront about what yeah. they wanted. Well, at least the rapists, they say hi before they try to grab ass and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're walking by, at least everything starts there with a hey, at least. Hey, baby. You know, uh, uh, these dudes. Who's this broad coming on our fucking plane? They didn't even see a woman when she came on. These, it's a hunk of meat. These guys here. Curves. Yeah, these guys, when she came on, they immediately were like, they, they immediately saw lips, titties, and ass. It is the most hostile work environment that you could ever be in. You think you got it bad with your boss right. and your, yeah. your supervisor. I ain't saying that you don't, but <laughs> shit. It's she, like a good old boys club yeah. Yeah. to the nth degree. <laughs> you know, these dudes, you know, because these dudes are, man, they, they, you know, they, they are, they're, 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 they're over the top. You know, they... Dudes are way too horny. You know, the moment she gets on a plane, the first thing that happens, like I said, dude don't say hello or anything. First thing he does, points at his dick. Oh, hey there, baby. I believe the powder room is not away. <laughs> it's like, damn. <laughs> you know, why don't you just have your dick out <laughs> while I'm walking in? Well, that would be good. He wants to be Southern. He wants to be Southern. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still a gentleman, sir. <laughs> what I look like, a rapist? <laughs> <laughs> all these uh, World War II movies, man, they all of them got to have that Southern dude. That old ignorant ass redneck. You know, always a, that's required. That is required. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm, sure, I'm sure if you asked him, he's from Texas. Mm. Or, or, you know, you could be somewhere else in the deep south. I, I just figure, like, well, they must have done a lot of recruiting in the south because drill sergeants always have a southern accent. They should do. <laughs> Man, yeah. it feels like all these World War II movies, it's like, okay, yeah, we, can we have the southern guy, but we also need the guy from New York yep. with yeah. a very thick yeah. accent. Yeah. We need a Brit, a Scotsman, and or an Irishman. We yeah. need one of those guys. Yep. He's very, you know, uh, angry all the time. And we need someone who is... Definitely a minority. <laughs> Someone who's a little darker shade. And they're the sensitive one. <laughs> yeah. It was almost like they couldn't get a like they couldn't get a black dude on there because you know the N-word would have been said every oh, five yeah. seconds. Absolutely, no yeah, question. It's like these dudes here, they you know they ain't gonna act right with a yeah. they can't act right with a chick on board. They shouldn't act right with a with a black dude up there. <laughs> and and uh yeah, you know, they got they got the they got the Brit, they got the serious captain. They got uh they got the young, the young Joker and of course they got the handsome guy the handsome fly boy handsome blonde Aryan guy yeah, yeah yeah so they got every, they got everything covered in that area yeah they might they might be mad because they are horny I don't know you know the other guy that like after she meets uh 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 Dick Dude with his you know <laughs> that is his name get yes. up on this <laughs> <laughs> the next dude she meets right after that is a dude who's just angry as fuck. What the hell are you doing here? Yeah. Get off now. Yeah. I'm on this flight. Get off. Like, yeah, 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 y'all keep arguing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm this. just going to stay here yeah. and look at you. Yeah, yeah, keep that crotch in my face. Y'all keep arguing. Yeah. I mean, they put, put like right. groundskeeper Willie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <That> angry Scotsman. <laughs> Red haired and everything. Yeah. I mean, the moment she just got through talking to Dick Dude, this dude like, bitch, what the fuck you want? <laughs> <laughs> one extreme to the other. Which one? You have to pick which one you want. Get, out, <laughs> get off my plane. It's like, it's in the air already. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> and don't drop the parachute. <laughs> just jump. <laughs> 
it's the military, and the military is still sexist today. They Hell yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, they, that's the thing I thought the whole time. I was like, I won't compare this to Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel because this is these guys are a product of their time and they're in the military, which is very much the boys club. Yep. And this is the definition of locker room talk. They're all trying to outdo each other yeah. by how crude they can be and yep. be territorial about it. And and everything in society has taught them like, yes, this is how you should be. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, let me tell you, I told you about me being in uh, basic training when these dudes brought in a stripper and they pretty much almost groped this woman down to where she was going to be a skeleton before they took her out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this, this is, I mean, it's not like Wonder Woman where she's just passing random dudes on the street. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, hey, baby, you know, no. This is, these are a group of guys who, like you say, they're locked together in a room and they're trying to outdo each other and how crude they can be. That, that's, that's it. A lot of it is bravado and yeah. exact just one trying to up each other. So, yeah. yeah. And, and it just becomes more disgusting as it goes on. <laughs> and even ratio-wise, in Wonder Woman, you had all the men who were horrible except yeah. for two guys. This is just like, what, six guys? And, and, and two or three of them are, are, are okay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You, know, you, got, you got three, pretty much three guys, maybe four, who are doing all the, the shit talking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. And it doesn't help when like the older dude was acting like that. So what are the younger, yeah. Yeah. younger dudes going to do? You know, she got up there and, uh, you know, they, they weren't even expecting this. And, you know, I just, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, uh, some of it's like, they just caught off guard. Yeah. There's a lot of twists. In the movie. Yeah. Because it's kind of funny, like how you brought up uh, in the marketing, they're saying, oh, it's obvious there's a gremlin. You sent me this film, I did not know what it was. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> and, oh, uh, I, came, I came in completely cold. I had no idea. And so I saw the opening, I saw the gremlins, like, okay, I guess there might be a gremlin here, or I, I don't know. <laughs> and it's really not until like the half hour in. I mean, you're laughing, but I just, I didn't know. I was like, no, that's actually oh, great. oh, now, now that there literally is a gremlin. Okay, I yeah. didn't know what to expect. I thought, mm -hmm. oh, is this going to be like more of a, like, they, they're like, imagining this thing uh -huh, that's on thriller. here? Or I'd say the first third, if not more, of the movies just spent in that little cockpit. I'm like, that is really cool. It's a bottle film. Yeah, and I was yeah. really digging yeah. it. Yeah, and, yeah. And Chloe Grace Moretz, I'll say this: uh, you you could tell that she sunk her teeth in this role. That she was so happy to get something like this. Mm -hmm. She really commits. She yeah. had a lot of fun, and I was having a lot of fun watching her. Same here. Yeah. Well, y'all were laughing. I just kind of like, man, these motherfuckers. Oh, because no, it's really ridiculous. Out a, I'm about to put out a knife and point at you. <laughs> no, listen. Well, well, don't put the knife away. No, don't do just it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there may be some critiques and things, but no, honestly, if Feels it's it's hey you know it, this reminds me something like um oh what was that movie oh, Overlord a couple sure. of years yeah. ago yeah. or yeah. even yeah. even Captain America the First Avenger where yeah, yeah. it's super exaggerated if you don't want to listen if you don't like that then you probably you're not gonna like this movie because the stuff that happens in here the stunts that happen what she ends up doing it's thoroughly ridiculous so. no that, that was the thing because I like you I was really digging this the whole mystery I didn't know where it was yeah. going yeah. and then to see the Gremlin I'm like oh shit okay it's kind of a horror movie but mm -hmm. it's got su such a dramatic element yeah. and such a air of mystery about it <clears throat> and we got the mysterious package and what's going on there yeah and man i was digging the hell out of this up until the revelation of what the package was about. yeah that's yeah and that's when i went say what yeah, yeah that's that's the soap opera drama stuff coming in there where i'm just like well, this, this is just okay this yeah is no ridiculous. even when they reveal all that i was like yeah, okay, but, but what is it really, though? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh, y'all are serious. Yeah, see, that didn't bother me too much, man. Mm -hmm. There are characters who, that are thin in here. Oh, yeah. We were talking about those Stereotypes guys. But, but, you know, this fits the format. This film has been described as, as pulpy by yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the movie does feel like a pulp comic to mm. me because they even use colors. It reminded me of Creep Show in some parts where it just yeah. things turn. You know, they use a lot of red and green to give it like a to highlight it like a uh, like a like a comic book. Give it comic book colors. It even uses like this eighty synth music. Uh, Did John Carpenter score this? He's like, I'm doing this yeah. during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, oh, yeah. it also made me think that it, it kept the feel the feel of those '80s movies that also were kind of campy and pulpy. Mm. That used the because you know I mean we'd say John Carpenter but a lot of eighties oh, sure, movies sure. used the, like that synth soundtrack. Uh, you know those things made me accept uh, the true what the fuck moments and believe me there are some major what the fuck is she doing moments in here. Yeah. And if you don't look if you don't if you if you can't accept that I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you to like it. Uh, you know I'm and because this is a movie that's really not for everybody. I don't think that this movie is. Uh, is unaware that it's doing that. I think that this movie is it relishes in the way that it's embracing the craziness. This reminded me of what of what this movie wanted to do. 
Robert Rodriguez, Planet Terror. They know that they're doing this. That was Grindhouse. And I think this movie knows, like, okay, these things can't happen. This the physics don't apply here. But it's one of those Grindhouse movies where it's like, yeah, we are making a comic book film that is supposed to be this exaggerated. We know to what extent we're exaggerating this. And, you know, at that point, and it's, but the thing is, it's not, it's not patting itself on the back. It really, since being at a focus on story, it really allowed itself to do, I thought, some good things. Like Chloe Grace Moretz, as you said, she was really good in this. Yeah, I can see why this this uh, project attracted her so much because she fully commits to, to, to the role. And she, she sells most of what's happening. You know, and, and I, I, you know, and, and Chloe Grace Moretz, she carries a large chunk of this movie, man. Also yeah, by she herself. Does. Was this made during the pandemic? Because I was when I was watching oh, this, I'm she's like so separated from everyone else for like 45 minutes. <laughs> it's mostly her. And now it's my favorite part of the movie. Because so much of what's going on, it's almost like we're not even seeing it. We're seeing it from how she's imagining things. Yeah, are yeah, happening. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was cool. I I, I like that. I, I I love bottle films and it was yeah, cool to see yeah. her in that little cockpit area. She spends about 30 minutes in in, in the balls of that plane, right there. literally in the one lone ball. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> the one testicle of that plane mm-hmm. right there. It's a it's a big mixture of things. And I thought it was able to really grow, go between all those genres pretty well. You know, in addition to being like a World War II movie, a World War II adventure film, you know, it's also a creature feature. The whole time, this felt like it knew where to take itself seriously, but not too seriously. And there were times when it said, I know how to go this far with it. I see a lot of movies that don't know how to do that. <clears throat> you know, and uh, this is one of them. Go ahead. You got something to say? Uh, yeah, just that, uh, yeah, it didn't, the transitions didn't work as well for me. Uh, as a matter of fact, why, why, a big part of why I ended up not liking this movie was because I liked it so much in the beginning, but I think it, it makes hard rights, uh, where it was just like, began, I was suddenly like, okay, what kind of movie am I watching now? Because I liked it so much at first, even when things were happening I didn't like, I was like, yeah, but you've built up a lot of good cachet with me, so I'm going to go with it. Mm-hmm. Until there was just points where I was like, all right, now we're in a completely different genre, and this is not what I signed up for. And the second half of this movie, I think, would work fine if it was a different first half. And, mm-hmm. and I, feel, I feel like that first half deserved to have the half that went with it, and it including the gremlin. I, I, I dug all that. Same. But just later, when it gets into the more re- re- ridiculous action uh breaking of physics uh and even where it it ends i was like huh i felt like there was so many great meaty things that were brought up that just kind of got curtailed so we can have that what you're talking about that that go to the the grindhouse and i was like that's too bad i wish it had started as a grindhouse movie and then i wouldn't have had expectations but where it goes i was just like yeah i just i just didn't dig this i mean if you did that's fine but for me i was like the, these these parts are parts they are not one whole yeah, I'm the complete opposite here. I thought it worked together well. I was surprised at how well it did. Especially uh, when the synth music comes in. That's when I was kind of like, all right, I'm checked out now. I, I realize, oh, yeah. I, I see what you're doing, and I'm I'm not with this. Even this, it, this, even this the, is not that. Even the beginning did that. Oh, you mean so like later on? Later when it, on, when it yeah. fully embraced. Yes. That. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you uh, to a, to a pretty close degree. Where I, like you, I I enjoyed the the first. 40 minutes more uh, definitely and uh, yeah really it's that it's that big reveal uh, that happens in the film and it's like oh that's really what it is and it's turning to that and then it gets really soap opery mm-hmm. and then there's other twists and I'm just like and so all this is just happening at the same exact time it's like ah that 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 went that was more ridiculous and you know what the other thing too there was the the action that happens later on didn't feel like the same action I saw earlier in that first forty minutes where it's like yes it's 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 a little over exaggerated because there's a goddamn gremlin crawling around there's Japanese yeah. zeros firing at you and everything but like I would take the one scene I'm not even gonna say what happens the one little scene of body horror with her mm-hmm. you know and this is like oh my god what a situation to be in you gotta deal with and it's like oh you feel that then the literal Looney Tune shit and you see in the trailer yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> being blasted outside the plane, then being blasted, blasted back right inside up, the plane. No, no cinching, no uh, nothing. But, like, but again, just you know, gravity. Look, we see this with Fast and Furious. Sure, that's, why sure. I, that's why I don't want to like. No, no. Like, that's, that's that, not but a, the thing is, Fast and Furious, they never start out like the way consistent. this movie started. It's consistent. Yeah, right? I, I, they, that, I, that, and that's why. And yeah. again, I think the inconsistency here was on purpose. You know, I think that's it was, fine. That's I think fine. it was supposed to be one of those uh, <clears throat> one of those uh, uh, dust till dawn situations, where it's like, all right, you know. Which is why I wonder. Yeah. They, I wish they hadn't shown the gremlin in the trailer too much because I think they want to be like, yeah, there's this thing happening, and then a gremlin in is a picture. Uh, 
you know, again, that's not for everybody. I I, I like that. Yeah. I, I that was something I was cool with. And, and I just wanted to say, I, I you know, I, not like I I didn't uh, like anything else that came after. I still had fun with it. I still liked you know the, the everything that came after a lot. When when, when the actress more grounded like on the plane itself and not her being blasted or doing some other yeah. things she did out on the outside. I was like, okay, this is this is more in line with what I would have preferred. But it was still fun. Yeah, I I, uh, I in by all means, I don't think this is a a great film. It's got some problems, but I did like yeah. what the what, what was happening with it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I, another reason why I wish they hadn't shown the Gremlin is because I thought the Gremlin design was cool. It was, yeah, um, yeah, it was scary. You know, because really? it's it it a big rat. It's not a big rat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, so, yeah, they, they thought it was a big ass rat because you know some people go here expecting Gizmo and shit, and, and, and no, this is not this is not stripe. No, it's stripe. <laughs> no, it ain't stripe. Stripe, is, stripe. stripe is playing. Yeah, <laughs> this Gremlin ain't fucking around. You that, know, this thing would kill Stripe. <laughs> this, this, yeah, this thing is when you when you uh. <laughs> Cause when you look at it, yeah, I mean, this this is a this Gremlin ain't about no fucking jokes and shit. Well, yeah, you know? it's a no. cross between man, bat, and a monkey. Yeah, yeah that's what, right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it, that's what I was thinking. It's a cross between a big bat, a, a big bat. It's part bat, part baboon, all asshole. Yeah. This, <laughs> <laughs> this this goddamn Gremlin here, man. I was like, you know what? Uh, I was like, you need to stop. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> <laughs> Grim after laughing. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker. Uh, yeah, but I love that scene with the finger. I love yeah, that scene that with the finger. So Did he, when she stuck it in there, I was like, no, don't do that. Don't do, yeah, yeah. 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 She, had, she had nothing else, though. Yeah. That, to me, that's my favorite action scene. I wish it's kind of more adhered to that mm -hmm. than where it went later on. You know, I, there, I found myself like so many times looking at that gremlin and said, man, just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you done tore, you done tore this plane up. You, you know, you, you did some damage. You, you harassed proved, this girl. You, you proved your point, man. Just be cool. But that gremlin got everything that he deserved, man. He, it's like a dude who keeps getting his ass whooped in a fight, but keeps talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, all right, you had it coming, man. Yeah. The big thing with this is that Max Landis wrote the script. And people are like, you know, oh. how is Mac, La Mac how is Mac Landis, Max Landis gonna write a pro feminist film when he's been assaulting and, and, and harassing and abusing women Possibly all this him. time? Yeah. Uh well, for one, this is directed by a female director, uh <laughs> Roseanne Liang. And she came out and said, and Chloe Grace Moretz came out and said, you know, this is that script has been rewritten so many different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this man ain't even close to it anymore. Yeah, he said, oh, "Look, we legally have to put his name." <laughs> it's funny how Hollywood steals so much shit and changes everything. It changes everything around. They go to court and be like, "Well, prove it," but they can't change it around. They take this man's name off of it. It's it's a percentage. If they still use yeah. a certain percentage of what uh, he wrote, they have to put his name. Yeah. On. So a lot of people are gonna be like, "Well, you know, that's kind of foul that they put this man in there." But it, it's it's a completely different film. They say it's been that that's how much has been rewritten, but they just legally have to do that. Um, mm. But yeah, you know, I I don't know if I enjoyed this more than anybody else in the room, but I did. I had fun with this. I was watching it. I was gonna cut it off last night, and I, I kept watching it. But I'll go ahead and let you guys have some closing words on this. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I don't know how much more I I have to say about it. Uh, it. It, it did strike me in the beginning like, hey, I'm really digging this. And the second half made me think, oh, yeah, this is something I'd watch at Fantastic Fest and have everybody cheering for it because they, they love when shit goes crazy like this. And I just kind of don't. Uh, my, I don't know. My rating would be just a very unenthusiastic matinee. I mean, sorry, uh, rental. Uh, yeah, sadly, the second half, it doesn't, doesn't really spoil it for me, but that's when it gets a little too ridiculous. That's when it literally becomes a Bugs Bunny, and he dealt with the Gremlins, too, way back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it becomes that cartoon straight up, Chad, so don't even think, maybe even more ridiculous than that. And so if you're, if you're in for that, then you really like this movie, but if that kind of is like, well, I kind of want a more grounded film, then maybe you'll prefer the first half of the movie like like I did. But still, it's overall very a very fun experience. It's it's all the films that we've had for you know starting out twenty twenty one. It's a good one. It's a good one to have. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I would give this. It's it's a solid matinee. Yeah, I thought I don't know if you were not, were gonna be on this, but it's the same for me, man. Mm -hmm. Look, like I said, I think it's the right balance of silliness while taking itself seriously at the right moments. 
I had a lot of fun with this. I think, you know, and you're right. You're right. If that, Because you got two different views right here. Martin is like, I don't like when it gets that silly. And that's, that's, that is, uh, if, you know. That, if that it is had a, started out that way, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, if you don't like tonal yeah. shifts like that or anything, then I, that's totally understandable. And you, that's why you should be told. Because that's, I get it, man. That's not, it's really not for everybody. Uh, but also to your credit, you know, I think it is a lot of fun. And I love that it was all over the place. You know, I think more movies should do that where we don't see what's coming and know what to expect. And, you know, we always ask for something different and this did it. But like I said, we've had movies that tried this before and they didn't do it because they were too busy patting themselves on the back saying, hey, look at this thing that we're mimicking over here. This doesn't th there's a difference between mimicking and there's a difference between being influenced by. Mm -hmm. And this is more influenced by and trying to do its own thing, but having the spirit of what it's taking the source from. Like you, this is a this is a solid matinee mm -hmm. for me. I had a I had more fun with this than I thought I would. Uh, you know, especially when they get down. Look, it's gonna get to a point in here where I don't. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I'm gonna say it's gonna it's gonna get to a point where you're just gonna be like, all right, when you see what Chloe Moretz does with this goddamn gremlin, this <laughs> should turn into a Rocky film. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, you know what? I, they they no, they, they did not mean to take this seriously, seriously at all. So, all right, so yeah. Let's see.